Okay, well, it looks like everyone's here. A lot of people have logged in. Uh, I want to say hello. My name is Derek Torrey, uh, Retail Director for uh, Shock Graphics. And uh, we're here to talk today to talk about how to uh, unlock the value of your content supply chain. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is click the button that allows me to see all of you and enable your cameras. And I bet you didn't know I was able to do that. So what we're talking about today is the state of uh, e-commerce for retailers. And the things that we are seeing in the market and with our partners is that today there is a big focus on established requirements such as your commerce, commerce platform, user-centric design, your hosting partners, your mobile strategy, and there's a long-standing relationship here and the, and the technologies are starting to become very mature. This is supported by a horizontally integrated uh, and also mature um, su supply chain, logistics supply chain. And a lot of investment has been made here, a lot of consulting, a lot of infrastructure investment, uh, and it's running well. It needs to be uh, adopted to get to the last mile, to get to the consumer at the door, but it's uh, we're running very well and it's very horizontally integrated. However, what we see with working with our partners is that the content supply chain and content development activities are still done typically in silos uh, and uncoordinated activities. And there's a lot of waste and, and redundancy. So what we see is a result to develop a fully integrated content supply chain that's focused on two key areas, uh, content strategy, a strong content strategy, and a lean process methodology. And that's what we'll be talking about today. So here we see the components of a content supply chain. And it is cyclic in nature. And what I hope to show you today is that the sum of the whole is greater than the parts. You really need to focus on this entire picture. I'm not going to go into all of them here as I will speak about them next, but the key is that it's cyclic in nature uh, and that you need to focus on the entire chain. So a little bit about content strategy. What is content strategy? Well, it's a recursive or repetitive process of aligning your business objectives to your content development activities. Karen McCrane, probably the uh, lead uh, author and uh, subject matter expert on content strategy, also goes on to say, don't create content for a specific context. Right? You're creating a holistic approach to your content, not content for mobile or content for the web or content for a package. A content strategy must be supported by two key elements, structure and a separation of structure from style. So a little bit about structure. Structure is the how and the what about your content. What is a priority? How do you tell the story about a product? And how do you tell that story across various pieces of media? In this case, we're focusing primarily on e-commerce, mobile, web. But also, how do you separate the content responsible for uh, a package versus that product description? And separating style from that structure really means you're not concerned when you're talking about structure about how it will be consumed. In today's world, as Karen would say, you really can't control how it will be consumed. So you want to separate that style and the how and the look and feel from the structure of that content. This enables you to do uh, pre-purposing. This enables you to plan where your content will go, where it will be consumed, how often it will be updated, and um, put a structure to that. That structure will allow you to search for it, find it quicker, and really get it through the process. We'll talk about planning a little bit and how that relates to content strategy. You want to ensure that your planning activities, whether it be seasonal or for a specific promotion, really begin to deliver product details early in the workflow, and as many details as possible. Details such as fabric, size, color, is it in a box or on a hanger? All of these pieces of information will benefit the workflow as we continue uh, along the chain. And you also want to collaborate with your partners to align priorities with the assortment. 
And what that means is sometimes uh, a product will come directly from a distribution center and you've got to get that online in 48 hours as fast as possible. And so your lever that you're working with there is speed. That's your goal. Where in other cases, if you're working on a seasonal workflow perhaps, you want to begin to batch or group like items uh, so that you can maximize efficiency. So you're, sub, you know, you're giving up on speed uh, to maximize efficiency and consistency. And retailers and manufacturers really need to work with their partners to enable that, it, rather than throwing it over the fence or letting the partner deal with that. A true collaboration really will save time and money and deliver better results. So next, in the, as the wheel progresses, we move on to workflow engineering. And with many of our partners, what we've seen is uh, there is no marketing offering. There's a very well-oiled process to get that product from ideation to manufacturing uh, and ultimately into a distribution center and beyond. Now, some will argue about whether that is truly uh, well-oiled, and I'm sure there's places to fix it, but there really isn't an off-ramp into the marketing process, into the creative process. And so that's what we're talking about here. Um, you need to begin and audit the entire process. We, we really have seen with our partners in retail manufacturing we've worked with that you, you can't just focus on one area or the next. Uh, asset quality or analytics or speed. You really need to look at the entire process from strategy uh, to site deployment or media deployment. And when we do this, we've applied lean methodologies lean method, manufacturing methodologies that really look at the process to reduce waste and um, remove redundancy. And we do that with uh, engineers, real continuous improvement engineers that focus on that process, that have that background. So it's something to look to your partners and look internally for that, that rigor uh, that you can apply. When you're looking at that, um, at your workflow, a couple of things, and this one seems very simple and I hesitated to, to put this in, but don't overlook uh, change management. We've seen many times uh, with our, our partners in retail and manufacturing that a great process will be adopted, mapped out, written down, agreed to, and then the change to get there doesn't happen. Or, and, and this goes to the next point, the, how you must adapt as you start to roll that out uh, happens too slow. So those last two words there that I have about the workflow, flexible and resilient. Flexible in that we're, you know, we work with retailers. We know change is what we do. And so that workflow must be flexible to account for different uh, delivery options, different speeds, different types of products. And resilient in the fact that it must be somewhat self-healing because mistakes and problems will happen. Samples will be too late. Uh, the retail sample will not match the manufacturing sample. There'll be an extra zipper, an extra button. The fabric will be slightly different. Uh, someone in a retail who, uh, workflow whose job it is to approve some content won't be available. So how does the workflow respond to that and keep things moving along without breaking or stopping? That's resiliency. And those are two of the key areas we're looking at when we do a workflow engineering, uh, re-engineering project. So now we move on. We've, we've looked at content strategy and how we get started. We've looked at the workflow and we've tried to drive efficiency and push out redundancy. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about style guides and brand standards. And I was thinking of doing a little interactive thing here and you could all comment if you have style guides and brand standards that are printed, that are physical PDF files uh, that are sitting on someone's desk at your agency, in your studio, somewhere, let me know. Um, we found that to be the case many, many times. So getting them distributed when you enter into a, a global um, workflow is very challenging. Envision uh, manufacturer on the West Coast, studio in New York, uh, and a post-production facility in Asia. And now you've got to try and push uh, changes to that style guide and those brand standards out across those groups becomes very challenging. So what have we done? Uh, we've moved those uh, style and brand guidelines online. Uh, that's kind of simple, but we did a lot more than that. When you bring it online, 
you can support all types of media, all the rich media that a campaign, a promotion, a brand will utilize today. And, and that's very important. Uh, video, rich photography, 360, various copy. It's really gone beyond what a standard guideline can support, but that's easy. Uh, some of the things it's done that are really uh, transformative, change control. We're, uh, we're now able to push out to that group the retailer on the West Coast and the studio in New York and the partner in Atlanta and the uh, production facility in Asia, we're able to push out changes quickly, almost real time, and that prevents errors and increases your efficiency. We've also integrated the style guides into the approval process because when a retail, uh, retailer or manufacturer or someone internal is working on approving some content, what is their, what's their reference point? I want to remove the friction from them looking at a video, looking at an image, uh, and approving it. So we've integrated that. And finally, that last point, one of the things we found is that the teams at our retail partners who are responsible for the look and feel, how that brand and how those products get out onto a commerce site, they have a hard time getting the analytics information from their web guys uh, for what's working, what's not. So we're driving that information, the analytics, the click-throughs and the engagement information, we're driving it back into the style guide and providing it in a language that's usable to the retailer who's driving that, that, that brand and that style and that um, creative treatment. So we're really trying to close that loop. So moving on from style guides and brand standards, now we're going to talk about the first kind of first step in this process, the real step in this workflow is samples and sample optimization. Um, fairly simple concept, begin tracking the samples further upstream. I'll talk about that more in a minute. And deploy a simple tracking system tailored to content development and not your typical content supply chain. And collaborate with your partners in the chain to reduce waste and save money. And the partners in that chain go upstream and downstream. Uh, I was in Belgium last week working with uh, one of our retail partners, and as we sat down and really started to uh, peel away the workflow, two separate business units realized that they had two separate processes for their Asian partners to tag uh, samples that were coming into their facility, and then those, those samples would then be tagged by that team, the retail team, and then sent to our studio, and we realized with just extending that workflow upstream a bit to their partners in Asia, we could get one tag on and know about the product even sooner, save an entire step, uh, and really pull a lot of waste out of that workflow, which will help us with efficiency and help keep the cost down so we can get more products online. Remove friction. So there, we, I, I'm an IT guy. I talk a lot about automation. I talk a lot about technology. Uh, but I, but I'll, I'll tell another story here. We were walking the floor of a studio in Chicago uh, with a, a retail client, and uh, one of the photo art directors picked up a shoe that had just come in from a fall by and showed us the front of the shoe. And the front of the shoe was beautiful wedge pump type of thing. And, uh, and the view that it was supposed to be captured with was straight on, and that was it, right? It was a, it was, um, a pretty st simple straight on shot. But when that product came in, they realized that there was a zipper on the heel. Uh, it didn't come through in the product information, but our workflow was flexible enough, and that person, that real person, saw that zipper and was able to route that um, product into a separate workflow that required more views, more approvals. And that's where I get to that flexible workflow and that resiliency, because you really want people to be able to react to that product because oftentimes it's different than what you anticipated. And that's, that's where real people come in and, and technology just can't do it. Finally, here on sample optimization, we've seen with our retail and manufacturing partners that when what, what is assumed to be a process that will save time and money uh, in Asia often adds time uh, and increases it, the cost. So uh, really look into that before you go uh, down that path. Um, unplanned delays and, and costs are, are really hiding at every corner uh, with Asia, as we've seen uh, for the past several years we've been working in that market. So we've got the samples, now we need to create the assets. Um, and I will play on words here, good damn, bad damn. 
the idea here is it really doesn't matter what your dam is. It's, uh, it's a mature space, and most dams do the work just fine. What really matters is that all along the workflow, from the SAMP optimization, the content strategy, through to the delivery and storage of assets for use later, that you're capturing and aggregating metadata. That's information about the process. So we begin with the intent to advertise, information about the sample, how it passes through the photography process, the approval process, video process. We gather information all across that, that workflow. And that is what is used to ensure that you've got a well-populated, very easy, rich set of metadata uh, with which to find, share, collaborate, and deliver those assets. So it's really not about the technology here at the dam level. It's really about your workflow and how well you uh, capture content metadata along the way. This last point here, providing access from planning to post. It, it's really important as soon as you've got information about that product, be it a line drawing, a photo, whatever you have, that it's available to the entire team. Because things change, samples are different, and it's really important that it's easy for the entire uh, team to get to that content. Now we get to copy, um, and we found with working with our retail partners that copy workflows are usually an afterthought. A lot of time is spent on photography, a lot of time is spent on video, uh, a lot of time is spent on style guides, uh, it, putting efficiency into that process, quality, uh, soft proofing tools, right, that's fairly mature. But then the copy is like still written in Microsoft Word, in a document. When is the last time that, we, that a document was useful in the workflow that we're talking about for e-commerce? It's not. So what we've been able to provide and what we see our retail and manufacturing partners using are tools that are collaborative, that allow writers to really quickly write from a shared dictionary, uh, to version that copy so you've got multiple languages, to reach into the style guide so when the copy style changes in that style guide, uh, it passes down to the writers very quickly and efficiently. And finally here, a lack, of, a lack of copy strategy, as we go right back to the beginning of the uh, chain, a lack of copy strategy really inhibits you from reusing that. And reuse is a content, is a term I'm not real fond of, but it, it really prevents you from getting the most traction out of that content as possible. I prefer pre-purposing to repurposing because it's, it involves some planning, some pre-thought, some strategy, rather than I'm going to take the copy that we wrote for the catalog, I'm going to trim it down, add some bullets and get it online. Uh, consumers are, and users have become too demanding for that today, as you all know, that are participating. So moving on, we've got the assets now, we move into quality and post-production. And we really believe that culture drives quality. When your artists, your photographers, your video, your uh, writers, everyone involved in this chain, when they believe in the content that they're developing, uh, they believe in what they're, the art craft they're performing, not the fact that they're delivering JPEGs to a scene seven site, uh, that that really improves quality. And there's some other you know, basic block and tackling here. Collaboration uh, and knowledge, right? I talked about that style guide and having rich information about the voice, the tone, the visual available, that helps. But the biggest point here is that post-production and quality really begins upstream earlier in this cycle, up in the content strategy and planning uh, phase. Because post and pre-production activities should be done with the same teams and the same cadence. And that really, really drives efficiency and high uh, accuracy and quality at the back end. And finally, versatile and consistent. You have to have both. You must be flexible because uh, the, that sample that arrived is going to be uh, done, it's a key marketing style, it needs a video treatment, it needs a 360 treatment, it needs the works, it's got to, but it's also got to be consistent. So you can't sacrifice consistency for versatility. The process and the technology that a partner brings must support both. I'm going to pick up the pace just a little bit here. Uh, business analytics. I had the uh, benefit of sitting at a conference the other day with uh, Harper Ferry. 
uh, Obama's CTO and uh, former founder of Threadless, and who really coined it for me. This is about big answers and not big data. This is about using business rules to analyze the information coming into this workflow and making decisions based on that information. Those decisions can eliminate manual redundancies. So for example, when we get a, uh, a request for a certain type of category, we know it's five views and a video. Right? A, a person doesn't have to go through that step. On that point, identifying key marketing uh, uh, brand forward assets that can get different workflows and different processes from the beginning of the chain all the way to the end if you've got an integrated process. And then again, simple constant measurement and reporting of the process KPIs ensure consistency. We had a, a large retail partner in our studio on uh, Tuesday this week and it was really interesting. We have a new style guide and so we're testing some, we're driving some materials through that style guide and at the same time the client is with us and we're pulling garments out of that workflow and testing the style guide that another business unit utilizes that had a little bit more depth of field, some blurs, some shadows, it was a little more emotional, and the goal was to see what the tax or the cost of adding that second style to the process. And we were able to do it with uh, a, a full buy, with the client on site, uh, with the retailer on site, and, and that's the type of information we're driving back real time into the process. Collaborate with your partners to measure the results. So don't forget that your partners are, can help you with uh, creative and production treatments online and that they can drive that information back into their process. You don't really realize it when you're on Amazon, but you're part of a test almost every day on Amazon. They test their analytics, they test the recommendation engine and their treatments of content every day. And I think everyone should learn from that and we should be testing uh, with high frequency and partners can play a big part of that. Data integration and SaaS, uh, not very sexy, but the, the key message here is partners need to plug into your organization very quickly. They need to walk in with a mature process and set of technologies for integration. In a market like, such as this, where the content itself is fairly mature, uh, videos, photos, copy, all the various creative elements for our market are, are fairly mature, it really is less about the dam, the approval system, it's more about how well can we plug into your organization and to your partner's organizations. Uh, on that point, when we've been working with our retail partners, I'm an IT guy, so IT is a bottleneck, you know, I feel that, but what we've realized is that when there's a clarity of vision and strategy communicated across the partners, up the chain and down the chain, that helps your partners work more closely with your IT teams. Uh, it's really not about uh, how much bandwidth they have, it's about how clear the strategy and the vision and the tactics are communicated to them, and that empowers your partners up the chain and down the chain. And finally, uh, everything but the sample is in the cloud, uh, and that should just be de rigueur. So, we've talked all around this uh, content supply chain, from content strategy, to uh, business analytics, style guides, all the way around. So what are the results? Uh, how does this work for our retail partners? Uh, one case study, Lord & Taylor. Uh, the situation was really, they had more products, they wanted to get online, they wanted to get them online faster and cheaper. Common. So what did we do? Well, we did a workflow audit. We engineered, we re-engineered the entire workflow from soup to nuts. We came up with a new creative vision, and we executed that vision through a dynamic style guide, a collaborative style guide. Clients in a different location than the primary two studios, in a different location than the post-production facilities. We rolled out a high-velocity color variation workflow, and that decreased costs and increased speed to market. And we helped them through a platform upgrade, commerce platform upgrade, and that went really smooth. There were no issues. And that was partially due to the very uh, well-executed data integration that we had between our two uh, organizations. Results were double-digit reduction in the spend, uh, a very consistent product presentation, uh, and we continue to do great business with Lord & Taylor. And please, go see the website and see the results. Uh, final case study is Nike. And we've been working with Nike for a while. And they came to us uh, and wanted to 
refresh their entire product assortment and the visual presentation. We had previously worked with a hollow body mannequin workflow and they wanted to work move to an on-figure workflow. Uh, the key here is this is a global workflow. So the, we not only had to come up with and defi define a creative vision that could be you know, executed product-centric, we couldn't disrupt the current workflow, we couldn't sacrifice quality, and we really couldn't touch price either. Price is still very important. And so we worked collaboratively and we piloted on one of their main, main categories. We reiterated quickly, drove analysis and, and metrics back in and, and ended up with a creative vision uh, and a re-engineered workflow that's deployed globally. Uh, the results, the early results that are in are fantastic. Um, almost 50% increase in user engagement and conversion. And we're currently rolling out through additional categories as we speak. And you know, the, the whole on-figure thing brings its a unique set of challenges and we just brought in line a, uh, an online portfolio for managing the global talent, right? Because talent becomes a, and models become a very big challenge when you're working across regions, across business units around the globe. And that was something else that we brought into this picture. So, in conclusion, the whole chain matters. You must really focus on the entire piece. The earlier in the process you focus, content strategy, the planning, the style guides, the deeper the benefits will be. And flexible integration is critical. We know the business will change, we know the technology will change, so integration in and of itself is not enough, it must be flexible. So, that is all I have. I'm a little over, but there is still time for questions, so I hope we have some. And I see one, quickly. What are some of the current trends in online content? Well, as I spoke uh, with, in the Nike case study, uh, consumers are becoming much more demanding of our content, and I believe curation is a well-used term now, and, and on-figure, truly emotional, bringing emotion to the content, I think, is one of the trends. And, and that requires an efficient workflow, otherwise it becomes too, too expensive. But the workflow must also support both approaches. So you may still have your simple product laydowns, but they need to be integrated with on-figure and video where it matters. So an efficient workflow will really help with that. Come on, there's got to be some more questions. I can see you out there. Let's see, I think you can all see this question. Virtually our product is represented online, small percentage in print. Do you recommend we capture copy and images at the same time? So that's really where the content strategy comes in and the pre-purposing of content comes in. What I don't want you to be to let, let to believe is that repurposing an image captured for the catalog online is a good idea because we've seen the results. You've got three products, one is siloed, one's on a black background, one's on location lousy results. But if your strategy allows you to pre-purpose and plan, then we know when we're capturing on location, we also need to capture uh, in silo. When we're shooting the silo, we also need to step off the set and into a video. So I do recommend at the right time capturing for print and digital at the same time. But really the question goes back to that strategy. Where is your content going to go? How is it going to get there? How quickly is it going to be refreshed? All of those factors weigh into how uh, the investment you want to make. Any other questions? All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that I taught you, I uh, explained a little bit about this content supply chain, how critical the, the whole is. Uh, and uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you again for joining us. Contact information is available. Um, be well.